Welcome everybody to this new episode of Consciousness Unleashed, Spiritual Healing and Evolution with Bonnie Saratori. I'm the co-host, Cynthia, and today we're going to be talking about chakras. Bonnie Saratori is a master tracker, master energy healer, a founder of Spiritual Acceleration. So Bonnie, tell us about uh, what are the chakras really what, and why are they important? Mm. Well, the chakras are actually energy vortexes, energy centers located in the physical body. We work with most of the seven main ones, you know, the crown all the way down to the first. There are many other minor chakra systems as well. You have them in your hands, your, you know, just throughout the body. There's lots of different centers. But the ones that are most important are the seven main ones. Now, they do have an eighth chakra, ninth chakra, but those are not located in the physical body. The ones that are in the physical body are the ones that I mostly deal with. And what happens in each chakra, like the first chakra has to do with life, death, survival. The color is red. The second chakra has to do with emotional energy, sexual energy. The color is orange. The third chakra has to do with your own personal power. Uh, The color there is yellow. Heart chakra, uh, the color there is green. Obviously, that's your true center. That's where we feel connection through the heart. If we're going to be courting in, this is the best place to do it. Fifth chakra, the color there is like a sky blue that has to do with communication. Uh, Third eye, sixth chakra has to do with the ability to see energy, you know, clairvoyant. Color there is like indigo. Then your crown chakra, which is like a a lens, like an open uh, energy field that connects us with our higher levels and higher connections with creation, things of that nature, that color is violet. So when we have past life experiences and we have a trauma or we have something that that causes us to have some kind of emotional reaction that we don't allow ourselves to go through because maybe it was too intense, maybe we weren't prepared or able to go through those emotions, those energy frequencies would get stuck in each of the different chakras, depending on what the issue is. For example, for dealing with life death situations, when we look at the world right now, there's life death happening for many, many people. They're they're on the brink of starvation. Some have already starved to death, Uh, lack of shelter, homes, clothing, things of that nature. Uh, So people are worried about money and finances and that all hits that life death survival. So it's going to feel more intense if we have carryover from our past lives where we were in that survival mode. Most people know what it feels like to starve, to be hungry, to be cold. You know, all of us have lived those kinds of experiences in the human body in our past incarnations. The energy of the traumas and shocks and crisis of those experiences get carried over and anchored into those first chakras when we are not able to know an emotion fully, which truthfully, most people don't know how to do that to this day, okay? So they certainly weren't doing it 40,000, 100,000, 10,000, 5,000 years ago, okay? So everyone's got all this carryover. The thing is, if we come back to that life, death, survival, you've already got energy anchored in that first chakra. You already have trauma. You already have stress, worry. You already have death experiences. So when that gets activated in this lifetime by your worry about how are you going to feed your family? How are you going to take care of yourself? There's not enough money. You know, those kinds of worries and stresses that threaten our very survival. The first chakra, because of the carryover, everything's going to seem more intense. It's going to be a bigger energy, a bigger feeling, and a bigger reaction, a major, much more stress and worry and concern because of all the energy that's carried over. So all of the chakras, basically, when they're aligned, you know, right through the body, so you see a nice alignment. And also when the colors are are right and it's all spinning, everything is looking good, healthy, clear. When we are balanced like that, our lives are also balanced. So anytime there's something going on in one of the chakras, if we don't clean that up, you know, we can do all kinds of inner work and things to uh, meditate. We can do all kinds of different things. But if we don't clean up those chakras, we're still going to continue to have the carryover, the reactions in each of those chakra centers. And if we go up to that second chakra, let's look at all the emotions. Look at your life. Everyone is like, how much emotion have people lived? 
you know, like in emotional energy, the fears and anxieties and stresses and worries and victimizations, all these energies are stored in that second chakra. So when that's blown up with all kinds of debris from past lives, and you, you know, you're in this lifetime, even if you had a great life, a great beginning, you're, you're still going to have carryover and you're still going to have trauma that's going to get activated at some point in your life. So again, the clearer these chakras are, the more balanced we are, and the healthier uh, our bodies are, our mental well-being, all aspects of us are much more healthier, much more together, more balanced well-being, more joy, happiness, more ability to go with the flow with what is happening in our lives. And when we got lots of debris, lots of stuff jammed in these chakras, it just makes life even more uncomfortable, more miserable, more suffering, you know, more victimization, more blaming, more judging. So we're not really clear and we're not really living the truth of who we are, which is that beautiful, true divine love and light in the very core. So all that wounding buries and covers up our beautiful light. And then all we, what we're living is the wounding. And then our ego gets developed and then we get further away from our own light and and then, you know, eventually most everyone at some point really does want to heal. They want their lives to be better. They want more happiness. So they might start facing them, themselves and start doing something, whether they go to therapy or they start getting healings or whatever modality a person is drawn to, then, you know, they start facing some of these issues. So you don't have to go into the second chakra or any of the specific chakras to unravel emotional energy, you know, to, by facing and dealing with what's arising and what you're facing and coming in contact with, by facing those feelings, unraveling those, that energy gets released out of that particular chakra, you know, for so for emotional stuff would be second. It doesn't mean that there is an emotional energy in all the different chakras, but those are the main uh, frequencies that are held in, you know, each chakra has its own distinct uh, frequency that it's carrying, you know, like, uh, like I was saying, the different uh, life, death, survival, things of that nature. So as we get clearer, our chakras also get clearer. So it's not like we have to just mainly focus on them. And yet what happens is if we start cleaning out the, the each chakra and we really do get it cleaned out, your life is going to change drastically because we have shifted energies that are lodged and locked into your psyche, into your subconscious, into the physical body, which also gets light body, Merkur body, astral body, etheric body, mental, emotional, spiritual, physical body. So it's affecting all levels of who you are, who we are. And when we get in there and really clean stuff out, it's just like, wow, it's like, whoa, things start changing throughout your entire body and also throughout your life. So for me personally, Focusing on the chakras, each one individually and unraveling everything we can possibly unravel in there is going to completely change one's life. You know, it's like opening up, becoming more the truth, more connected to your own self, your own, you know, your own divine love and light. So these energy centers that are lodged in the body, um, sometimes they're out of balance, out of, they're not in alignment, sometimes they're pushed over. So everything that happens in the chakras is going to affect you. It can affect your health. It can affect, affect your thoughts, your emotions, your well-being, your reactions, your beliefs. And having clear, clean energy vortexes just allows for a much healthier human being and a much healthier life experience. Bonnie, you've talked about uh, how the chakras are vortexes specifically. Could you talk about that? They have to be spinning in a certain direction. And I also heard that they're yeah. portals. Is that true? Like they, they're portals to other, like, I guess, uh, dimensional energies that help support us. They can be. So, so you have a main, almost like when you look at the spine, so down to that spine, you're going to have a channel, like a tube of energy. The vortexes, I mean, the vortex, the chakras are connected to that tube. Okay, so here's the, the tubes going this way, chakras connected, they look like, you know, they come out like this, like a cone. Okay, now healthy chakras are spinning in a clockwise direction. Sometimes when we're clearing, clearing and cleaning them up, I'll spin them in a, the opposite direction, just to change the frequency and get get things that were been stuck and 
and caked on to start loosening up and then spinning them back in the correct direction. So the vort the energy frequencies, they all connect to that, that main uh, channel. And these the energy vortexes can be act, used to access into other time space dimension. Like a person could go into uh, any one of the chakras and with intention you can uh, take yourself into another, like a portal that will take you into another time and space. Now, there are some who say that we have chakras pointing in both directions, meaning here's the front of the body, here's that channel pointing out, but I would also have the same pointing in the other direction. Now I can see and sense those energies, but for some reason they're not lit up in everyone like it doesn't mean they're not there they have like most of the time i can see like a shadowy energy of that so it's not really active or activated everyone's got the ones that face forward and there are just not that many that literally have these the the ones that are facing from the back out that are truly activated and active spinning chakras in the body so what's so the difference we, between sorry what's the difference between the forward ones and the back ones um, there's, well, the only difference really is that these are like what we would call primary. Okay. These are what we're going to always find inside of everyone. The other one, the other point, pointing would be like called secondary. Okay. So sometimes with secondary, we may never use them. We may never access them. We may never, you know, even know about them. Okay. But like I said, some people, like I can see different, I, as it's just presenting, but I can see different people that do have very strong activated chakras pointing in the in the opposite direction. It's not going to affect your well-being. It's not going to affect your other chakras. It's not going to affect um, you in the same way that the vortexes that are pointing in the forward direction from the body are, are going to affect us. Okay. So like I said, they're secondary. Oftentimes there's not much in those sec those the those chakras pointing back. Like even when I'm looking, like if I even look at you, I mean, I can see them, but they're kind of like, um, so they're not bright. They're not uh, strong. It's almost like a shadow, like a shadow. Okay. So when I look at those, they're empty. They're not, they, you didn't, you didn't use them for carryover from past lives. Um, they're, they're still in that cone shaped. They're actually not even spinning. They're just kind of dormant. But I, I know that if you were started to work with them, then they would begin, you can get them spinning, you can get start activating them, get the colors going. And in doing that, what that also does on, an, on another level is by having all of the chakras actually the proper colors and the proper spinning and uh, the proper locations, what that does is it brings the body, the human body, more into a, a, a much more well-balanced state. And, and you don't really need to have those activated to still be in a balanced state. It just makes it even more uh, aliveness, more balanced. So for someone who maybe has health issues or they've been you know, living a long time with debilitating health issues where they're you know, fatigue or whatever those health issues are, to activate these other uh, chakras would actually be beneficial because it would help to balance out. It would help to bring more energy vitality into the entire body okay but again they're they're really secondary it's not like you have to be doing that you don't you know don't even worry about it it's like most people don't even know they exist so unless you're having some kind of knowing or some kind of feeling that you're really drawn to that you're okay totally okay to just be with the ones that the primary ones that we work that we all work with Bonnie, you've talked about how trauma in, in this life and in past lives and carryover uh, affects our chakras, but I'm sure that there's also other interferences too, because you always talk about the scarnets and dark force stuff and maybe all these other things that could be affecting the chakra. Could you get into that as well? Yeah. Okay. So we can have discarnates, okay? Discarnates, they can be carried over from past lives. They can be coming in from this lifetime. Discarnates are going to amplify whatever issues you have. Discarnates will be uh, attracted to you based on 
the energy wounding that you hold in these chakras. And it's like, like energy will be drawn to like energy. So if you've got trauma, let's just say that in that second chakra, there's been some kind of sexual abuse or sexual molestation or sexual trauma, you're gonna have other beings, dead people coming into your body that also have same only different traumas, okay? And it's gonna be true for everything, every issue, every area of your life, all the chakras, no matter what they are, you can have discarnates attached to those energy uh, energy frequencies based on similar energy, you know, like energy attracts like energy and not even know it. The problem with having discarnates is you begin to think and feel that your these thoughts, these feelings, reactions are actually you because you can't tell the difference when in fact, it may not be you at all, okay? So not, we don't want discarnates in us. We don't want strangers in us. We don't want somebody else's wounding in us that totally affects us. It can truly mess us up. It can cause us to feel things that we wouldn't normally feel. It can cause us to have addictions and it can cause us to, you know, have different thoughts and different beliefs. I mean, it's it's just like another human being stepping in and kind of influencing how we are. Okay. Just imagine that. So think of somebody that you know that you don't like or that they don't have same views as you or beliefs as you or think like you. And all of a sudden they're in your body affecting you. You wouldn't really like it. Okay. So that really is what's happening. Then we have um, implants. We have implants from aliens. There's many species of aliens that implant people implant people into the different chakra centers. Some people are scientific research. That means you've been uh, researched for lifetimes and implanted for lifetimes. Okay, many, many different reasons why you're being implanted. Many different reasons why you're being tracked. We also have implants from the military, the government, and the what I call the one percenters. These are the people who, who really own, the, they have the big bucks, the big money, have uh, want to control uh, enslave human beings, depopulate, things of that nature, they also implant people uh, to control, manipulate. So we have those kind of things happening. Then we have the powers of darkness that can be um, it from coming from past lives where uh, you've given the go ahead or you've called upon the powers of darkness. Once you do that, you're not set free. You're bound for eternity. At least you were. We can shift it now, but there was a time when we couldn't. So uh, the powers of darkness, when you decide you don't want to be a part of that anymore, they'll send the minions, the servants, the demons, the gargoyles, all kinds of dark, nasty, gnarly things to affect your life, basically, to mess you up, okay? And the, you know, the uh, Satan, uh, Lucifer, Bill Bob, whatever you want to call all those really negative energies, they, they don't leave you alone. Okay, so if you've opened that doorway, you're pretty much screwed until you get help or you're able to unravel and clear that yourself. It doesn't just end ever, okay? So that we have all the dark force interferences, we can have cloaks around us, shrouds, uh, we can have be bound up in chains and rope and uh, bindings, different kinds of things. Everything keeps us you know, stuck and bound, keeps us held back. So there's so many different kinds of interferences. And then we also have curses and spells that get cast on us. Those can lodge right in the different energy center, the different chakras. And, you know, get, we need to always be cleaning those things up as well. So anything that, that comes into us, we don't want. You know, the truth is the frequency of love arises from within. Okay, that's within. That always comes up from within. So when we're feeling love or we're feeling like we're feeling somebody else's love, we're actually feeling our love. Um, I'm bringing this to to the to awareness simply because other people's emotions we're not really feeling them. We're feeling our own. So when we when we're thinking about somebody else or we witness something and we feel sad or we feel you know like we're thinking we're feeling their emotions, what we're actually feeling is our own, and those are all coming from that second chakra. And just we want to be clear about that. You know, we're not, if I cut my hand and say, I feel my pain, unless you cut your hand, you can't relate to my pain. But if you have, then you're going to be thinking you're feeling my pain. You're not, you're feeling your own, you know, your own memory of your own pain. The, um, 
all the different chakras, they hold so much energy that we carry forth. And again, lots of interferences will attach, you know, discarnates attach. There are so many different frequencies on the astral planes. Uh, but when people are casting curses or hexes or spells or voodoo or witchcraft or sorcery, wizardry, all those different really dark energies, you know, they're, uh, they're affecting our, our lives, but they're also affecting different chakras. So, you know, having healthy chakras is vitally important, like really important. Yeah. What's the weirdest thing you found in a chakra? Hmm. <laughs> Well, creatures, I mean, I, yeah, creatures that do not come from this time and space. I would say some kind of creatures. I, I come across different creatures, critters, things that are very strange, very different, very unusual. And I find those, um, you know, throughout the different energy centers, like throughout the body. Um, I would say those are the weirdest things I've ever experienced. Some of the time, you know, you got carryover and like, I know this may sound weird, but when you, like, for example, I remember seeing like a horse in the second chakra. Someone is em emotionally attached to their horse, okay? So they held on to that horse, that spirit of the soul energy frequency of that horse carried it over into the, you know, into this lifetime and it's lodged, still lodged in, in that second chakra, okay? So it's just crazy what we carry over people. Whatever we are attached to, you know, whatever we don't want to let go of, we're going to carry it with us and we'll bring it right into this you know, this body right here, right now. So it's kind of a trip. So how can you tell if a chakra is blocked, like a specific one, like if you tune into your own body, uh, what are some of the things you could feel to tell if you need to work on that chakra? Mm. Yeah. So when you're tuning in, like if you become aware, you know, taking your awareness and just sensing, like, for example, you take, it's not only you take your eyes because we can all do this. Okay. So if I have my eyes, I want to take my eyes and just bring to my third eye. All I'm doing is raising my awareness and bringing it here. Now, if I'm feeling and sensing, like sometimes we can feel like, wow, there it feels like there's debris or it feels like I'm burned or wow, it feels like there's something in here. So those are sensations, physical sensations that we can feel. And it could be anywhere. Now I'm just going to address all the chakras. Sometimes we just feel, wow, I just feel some sensation. I feel some kind of blockage. I feel it physically. Other times we might, um, some people have the ability to see energy. So we can literally see our own energy and go, whoa, my heart's blocked or chakra is blocked. Oh, I got my power center is blocked. I feel some kind of blockage. So sometimes we can sense, see that with our own sight, our own ability. And then also, in our lives, when we are, you know, just being in life, we can feel lim our blockages, we can feel sensation in the different chakra areas, like when we're talking to people, or, or maybe something's going on in our life, and we feel, you know, something going on, like we might feel an anxiety, or we might feel some stirring, um, but energy is not really moving, that's a good indicator that chakras are stuck, because there isn't a flow, energy is not releasing, not coming out, not moving. Uh, you know, it's stagnant. Okay, so we can feel sensations. So physical sensations, those physical sensations can be moving energy, it can be when I'm saying moving, I mean, you know, like you can feel energy stirring around. Uh, other times, it just might feel tight, or bound or locked up. So those are some of the things that we can actually feel physically. And then also sensing our own bodies we can feel those kinds of sensations. Also, when we're connecting with people or talking to people, sometimes let's just say that we've got throat chakra issues, or maybe we've had past lives of, you know, severely being hurt, harmed, damaged, traumatized, hurt, um, uh, uh, basically, you know, physically, mentally, emotionally traumatized. When we're speaking, we just sometimes we can't get the voice, we can't get the words out, you know, it's like a lockup. Anytime that's happening, I guarantee you, you got some throat blockages, throat issues, something that's keeping you from being able to just speak your truth, just being authentically real. Uh, heart center, too, is like, you know, when you're wanting to feel love and you just can't feel any love or you can't feel any emotion, that's a big duh. You got blockages, okay? Um, and then also, like, the power center, you know, it's like, do you feel empowered? Do you feel free? Are you expressing yourself? Are you afraid to be out in the world or do you feel totally safe and like yes let everybody see your great great powers that you have 
you know, the greatness that you are, your, your self-empowerment. And if you're holding back or, or feeling afraid or uncomfortable, of course, that is going to indicate you got some kind of blockage. So it's, you know, it's really just about what are you experiencing in life? And then, oh, here's another one. This is a good one. So the crown chakra connects us with our own higher levels, our, our super consciousness, our God self, our over soul levels. This is where we're actually getting our guidance. You know, sometimes people think it's God talking to them. It's your own talking to you, okay? And if we want to go into creation consciousness and we go straight on up and go into the place of pure awareness, because that is God consciousness, where there is no thoughts, there is no good, bad, right, wrong, there's no judgment, there's no needs, no wants. It's pure, pure, pure awareness, no emotion. People are confused thinking God is emotional, not, okay? So blockages to all of these, you know, keep us feeling like we're shut off or we're we're blocked off or cut off. We think it's to God, but it's actually to all of it. It's all our own higher levels, our own, you know, all the levels of who we are. That's our deepest connection. So anything can be blocking it, but we can feel it. There's many, many ways we can suspect it or, you know, just have a sense of, you know, and always trusting that knowing, trust your senses. And, and when we feel like there's blockages, do what you can to Get them unblocked. It really makes a huge difference in our lives when our chakras are flowing and bright and spinning in the right direction and the right colors and aligned. Everything, life is way, way better. So once a chakra is clear and let's say your whole chakra system is aligned, what do you have to do after that to maintain it? You can spin it. Well, what ha- actually, truthfully, once they're clear, they continue to just, they, they're, they're chakra centered. They're like a little more, they just keep moving on their own. Okay. But if you want to make sure, so whenever ha- something happens in your world where you have some kind of an emotional reaction or some place where you're not able to speak your truth or anything that keeps you from just being fully open, that means there's a shutting down or closing down. We want to go in and face that, unravel that, and keep everything open. Keep the energy flowing. Keep the emotions flowing. So if something happens tragically in your world, don't push it down. Cry it out. Blow it out, you know, by feeling all the way, keeping your heart open. And then also, you know, sometimes too, you know, just blow out, blowing out that third eye. You can like imagine uh, like a rose or a flower or anything, and you just blast that, blow it out. That just kind of keeps that open. And the crown chakra, you know, have that intention where you're taking your awareness freely flowing right up into the state of awareness, which is pure consciousness, God itself. You know, there's different exercises, you know what I mean? Just going up and and also making sure your communication can communicating clearly. Um, Basically, be in life, say yes all the way, no matter what you're experiencing. Okay, if you don't like something, then don't like it, but have whatever reactions you're having. If you love something, then keep opening and just fully embrace it and love it. Just be authentically you, basically, will help keep all the chakras balanced, spinning in the right direction. Bonnie, you do have some semi-private sessions coming up for the chakras, and that's starting pretty soon. It'll be one chakra each month. Is that right? For yes, seven yes. months? Could you yes, tell us yes. for people who are new to your work, maybe this is the first time they heard about you. Could you talk to uh, tell us about the semi-private sessions and what those are? Oh, yeah. OK. Semi-privates are pretty close to having a private session with me. It's just that rather than one person, we have a small group of people. The awesome thing about the small group is you're getting the benefit of everyone else's clearing. Um, so same in you, same in me. So whatever I got running, you're going to have running too, whether it was another lifetime or something. So the semi-private is an opportunity to get deep unraveling. And at the very end, I give like about between a 20 to 25 minute uh, activation, uh, visualization, clearing um, something to really tie in that clearing, you know, that really helps to open you up even more. So it's a, a great way to get your work done, a great way to get a you know healing done. And the benefit of a group, uh, for me personally, I think unless you've got something that can't be addressed, group semi-privates are really a great way to go because it is a, like a full hour of, of work clearing. The entire time is a full hour of clearing that you are getting the benefit of. 
So it's pretty potent, pretty powerful. Right. And the first one starts November 19th. That will be the root chakra. And then each month there'll be one for the uh, remaining chakras. And if mm-hmm. you order right now, it's 20% off for the whole bundle. Uh, is, is that only going to uh, be for uh, after uh, November 19th? You can't get the 20% off. Is that right, Bonnie? Because you have to order yeah, all of them? Yeah, you have to get them all. Yeah. If you want to get 20% off, then you need to, that's what it's all about. Yeah, 20% if you buy the whole seven sh- chakra series. Yeah. Great. So uh, I will leave the link in the description. Uh, to this episode. If you want to buy that, I'll, I'll put the link down below. Bonnie, is there anything else you want to talk about with the, about the chakras and share with us? Mm, just to take them serious. You know, they are, they do help to balance the body. They, we are affected when they're blocked, when they've got damage in them, when we've got pain or anguish or beliefs, any of those things, they affect us. So the, I promise you, the clearer your chakra, the happier you're going to be more successful, more ability to receive. And remember, you gotta have that heart open if you wanna receive, that means receiving love, abundance, money, wealth, everything. Everything's gotta be flowing. And then when it, when that's happening, like no matter what, world could be falling apart, but you're still in some state of balance, harmony, and peace. All right, thank you so much, Bonnie, for your time talking about the chakras. And thank you everybody for listening. Once again, this is Consciousness Unleashed with Bonnie Serratori. Please follow us on all the social media platforms, YouTube, Apple, Spotify, all the major platforms for podcasts we're on. Uh, Thank you for listening, and I'll see you next time.